Did somebody order an unboxing video? Welcome to the unboxing video of the Elegoo Neptune 3. I'm your host, Meat Popsicle. <laughs> Mmm. Tastes like quality. And you see that? That's the RSG auto leveling system. This 16 point leveling system with a strain gauge pressure sensor on the print head makes sure you always get a super level, super good, super duper hassle free print every time. Nozzle plugging issues got you down? Have no fear. The double gear metal extruder is designed with a titanium alloy throat pipe for more stable and precise printing, reducing the risk of nozzle clogging. Shh. Do you hear that? No? That's because this printer is super duper quiet. It has special drivers that keep it below 50 decibels. I mean, just take a look. I got three of them around me. And the only thing that wakes me up isn't the printer. It isn't even three. Do you suffer from attraction issues? Looking for a more magnetic way of getting closer to what you want? I have great news. This printer features a spring steel magnetic platform with a special coating, anti-warping, and high stickiness. You can remove the printed models merely by bending the steel sheet. No more waiting for it to cool down. I love that. With the filament sensor, whenever the filament runs out or breaks, the printing will pause until you load the filament and push resume. Don't even worry if the power goes out. It can get right back to business. The handle included with this printer has me making all kinds of gains in the gym. 69, 6,900, 69,000, 69 million, trillion, bajillion. Do you even lift, bro? Negative reps. Oh. Ah. Uh. Although I have to confess, my favorite thing about this printer is the removable full color touchscreen display. This thing can be operated by hand or it can be fixed on the base. The menus are very easy to navigate and it looks great. I can even pretend to have friends and call them on a retro looking phone. Yeah, yeah, Steve. Yeah, it's me. Yeah. Oh, me, I'm just, you know, living the life, living the dream, printing millions. What? I said printing millions. No, not, no, not US dollars. No, I'm just printing millions, you know? <laughs> oh, hold on. Anyway, like I was saying, hello world and welcome back to another episode of Kimchi Robotics. Today, I'm gonna be unboxing the brand new Elegoo Neptune 3. I have already purchased three of these. I only purchased one in the beginning because I didn't know it was gonna be this good. I had a Creality CR10 V3, it's given me nothing but problems, but it is a good printer. It's just got problems, okay? We all have problems. And despite its large build plate, I needed something that was a little more predictable, something that had no leveling problems. I just wanted to relax. I just wanted the prints to come out in a predictable way every single time, and I didn't have to baby it, which I detailed in my last video where I went through and fixed the Creality CR10 V3, and I gave my opinions on some of the things that are wrong with it although it is still a good printer and a lot of people have had success with it there is no way i would have been able to build giant helmets with that because of the massive build plate however i think i'm ready to move on now i know what you're thinking you're thinking oh you know what there's a lot of other options out there with auto leveling and whatnot let me tell you something this printer is at a steal of a deal right now you can get this thing 90 dollars off in the US. I got my first one during the first pre-order batch and then I got my other two during the second pre-order batch and they came fairly quick. They came all the way from Hong Kong, China, I have no idea. I've had nothing but good experiences with this printer. Right now you can get it $90 off like I said. It's under $300 and it has the auto leveling feature. Let's get into the unboxing. Ah, behold, the box. All right, so let's go ahead and dig in. Let's see what we got in here. Uh, you got some plastics. Um, you got a spatula for cooking eggs. And you have some zip ties in case you need to 
take care of some business. We got a little PLA in there, I noticed. Yeah, it's not really gonna do you much, but it's a nice gesture, I appreciate it. Um, it looks like there's a few other things in here. Uh, they give you a USB cable. If you wanna hook up directly to your computer, there's the handle in there. You can't see any of this. It's okay, I'm gonna show you, don't worry. So, let's take a deeper look, let's take a deeper dive. Oh look, it's the instructional manual. Now, the first thing I noticed was, when I got my Creality CR10 V3, the instructional manual was very lackluster. In fact, there were almost no troubleshooting tips or advice or anything like that when I got the printer. It was very bare bones. And that's the first kind of red flag I had with that printer. I spent a bunch of over like $500 at the time on that printer and there was like almost no aftermarket stuff. It was really hard to find their videos and it, it just wasn't there. So what I noticed with the Elegoo Neptune 3 was they have a very impressive, you know, very succinct, very short explanation of how to quickly put it together. You know, on the third, fourth page, oh, page six, whatever, I'm a liar. You, it, it shows you that. And then it also suggests that when you get the printer, you're going to have to make sure that the bed is snug enough. So these, these nuts come loose and you need to make sure they're just snug enough. Otherwise your bed is gonna wobble. And that's the problem I had with my first uh, Neptune 3 that I got and they said that's normal that just happens you know while they're boxing it up and shipping it across the oceans I definitely appreciate that was the first thing that I noticed in this manual it also shows you how to use the touchscreen and the auto leveling on the following pages it even shows you what it looks like to have under excru uh, um, under excursion extrusion under extrusion and over extrusion how far the nozzle should be it gives you a very simple graphical representation you don't have to look anything up when you're setting up this printer it's really almost plug and play that's why i love it so much and they also show you how to get into the slicer that they recommend they recommend the elegoo flavor of cura you do whatever you want okay i heard there's some really nice slicers out there it's your party you do whatever you want now moving on to the actual contents of the box. There's the power cable. This is a foam block. And underneath the foam block is this little guy. This is the touch screen full color display. You'll notice that it has a 1980s, 1990s, early 2000s style phone cord and I love it. This you can hold in the palm of your hand if you want to and you hook it up to the printer and this is how you interact with the printer, it's really nice. So if you don't want to hook it on to the, bo the bottom of the printer like they have it, you can put it anywhere really. I mean, you just gotta get these, you know, some screws and you just hang it up wherever you want. You can do whatever you want. I also noticed, if, this, if there's a phone cable in here, is there a way to wirelessly get some sort of module on both ends that you could print wirelessly? Probably, right? All right, now let's take a closer look. So you'll notice that this is the power unit with the, uh, the motherboard inside of here. So this is how you open up a box. You just lift it up. You're gonna pull this out. Boom! Check that out, okay? So the first thing you need to do is, depending on where you live, you need to set this, just like you would with a computer power supply, to 115 volts or to the 230 volts. It depends on where you live. That's your responsibility, not mine. So I live in America, so that's 115 volts. So I just shift that on over and we put this to the side. You also notice this is like a, the cable that you'll see on a lot of uh, electronic uh, RC cars or planes or drones. I usually unplug this when I'm doing anything related to moving the, it around or, you know, I don't know, it, whatever. Oh, look at this, another useful explanation right on the build plate. You notice this build plate is kind of gold. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah? I love it. I print gold with this printer, I'm telling you. So it immediately goes into the auto leveling feature and it lets you know, you know what I just told you. Also, it says the hot bed slide block wobbles, just like what that was in the instructional manual. It does show you in yellow. That means these are the first things you're gonna have to deal with with a printer because this is a machine and machines need to be calibrated and taken care of, okay? Just like kids, you gotta take care of them. All right, so the auto leveling feature is pretty simple. 
You do need, they do suggest that you use a paper at the end just to get that right feeling of friction. And that's gonna be up to you. You're gonna actually see very quickly whether the nozzle is too close or too far. So I don't really pay attention too much with the A4 paper thing. A lot of people like that. It's never worked for me. What works for me is just looking at it and then I'll print something and then I'll do a micro adjustment on the Z axis while it's printing and maybe start over. So that's how I like to dial it in, but you do you, you do you. Okay, so next we have the actual, we got the bed here, uh, the build plate, whatever you wanna call it. You'll notice it only has one Z axis rod, and I like that. My CR10 has two, and it's giving me nothing but problems. So let's go ahead and pull this thing out. It is a little tricky to pull out at first, but you just kinda grab life by the horns, you know, and just rip it up, you know, yank it up. This is connected to here. I know why they did that, it's because because that's why they did it, that's why. So you just lift everything up, and you just get it out of there. There we go. So now you just pull it out of the box and you're done. There, it's unboxed. So if you're impressed with this box, if you're kind of a box file, um, you might wanna get it. There's a link in the description. By the way, did you know I designed a holster for both the left and right controllers for the Oculus Quest 2 Meta Quest VR thing because I was tired of not being able to snack on my tater potato chips mid-game or take a drink or just go to the bathroom. Yeah, did you know that you could go to the bathroom and pitch dark with the VR on? Yeah, if you got the Oculus Quest 2, it's got the cameras on it and you could just waltz on into the bathroom and just take care of business. The only problem is if you don't mute your mic, everybody's gonna hear it, unless you kinda like that thing. You can buy the STL files if you have your own 3D printer or if you purchase the Elegoo Neptune 3 and you wanna print it butter smooth and perfectly, like me. Go ahead and check out the links in the description. I have it listed on Etsy and I also have it listed on my site for a much steeper discount. Go ahead and check it out. And if you want the 3D printed physical copies, I also have those available in the links in the description below. If you buy the physical copies, you will get a custom designed VR themed sticker. That's right, I had, how many did I get? I had five custom designed VR stickers made and for the first 100 orders, I'm going to be putting in free stickers in each order. And when you order, you're gonna get the left and the right sides with the retention clips and I might even throw in one extra retention clip just in case. Just for you, because I care about you. Ludicrous speed, go! <laughs> oh, I forgot to mention, they also supply a lot of tools, which is very nice. They even gave me clippers. All right, now for the most boring part of the build is where I screw all this together and you're just gonna sit there and watch. Deal with it. Here's some tunes. Ah, son of a Bowden tube, I played the wrong music again. Here you go. So that pretty much does it for this build. It's a lot easier than you think and it was a lot easier than my other printer that I had before. And like I said, I have assembled three of these, so you can too. The last thing you need to do is hook up the display into the appropriate phone jack. There's only one, it's on the front. And then you're going to need to double check that all of the stepper motors are connected and then make sure that the actual power unit is connected 
through that, uh, that yellow connector that we saw earlier. Instead of me explaining everything, just watch, it's much easier. Hey, make sure you click that like button, all right? Like, bruh, totally like, I mean like, click the like button, bruh, for reals. It like helps and stuff. So like, click the like, bruh. Wiggle, wiggle, wiggle. If it wiggles, you need to tighten the two nuts underneath the bed. <laughs> this is the best beginner and intermediate printer ever! It's not even $300 right now. It's the best! Link in the description below.